Hello and welcome back to Dodge Tech. Today we're going to be replacing my well-aged Fenon 2 965 CPU with something a little newer and with a fair bit more grunt. Having tried an overclock with limited degree of success, I really thought it was time for a new solution for my AM3 Plus platform. This process, however, will be the same on any AMD socket back, dating back to at least AM2 and all the way up to the current AM4 and FM platforms. To get started, we'll need a new CPU. Here I have chosen the FX8350, some replacement thermal paste for the heatsink, as well as a Phillips head screwdriver to undo any screws that we might come across. Before we start, some important points to mention are power consumption, heat output and the BIOS version. This is using a newer architecture which means it should use less power than even my old quad core and also has the same TDP therefore it won't overwhelm my Cooler Master TX3 EVO heatsink. My current BIOS version is 1302 and this CPU will be fitting, the FX8350 requires a minimum BIOS version of 1006 so in theory it should slot straight in and work so let's get to it. First things first, to upgrade any computer component, you'll have to get the side off. Two screws on the back, take those out, pop the side panel off. In my case, I have fans connected to the side panel, so I'll have to unplug those out of the motherboard. Important thing to mention before you touch any of the components inside is to earth yourself to some sort of uh, metal, like a radiator or light switch, metal one and that will just take any static electricity off of your hands and obviously you don't want static electricity in your computer because it can break things. Let's unplug my side panel fan which that isn't. There we go. Next thing I want to do is we're going to get as much space as possible to do this upgrade. So, easiest thing to do to get us some space is to take the graphics card out. Firstly we're going to unplug the 6 pin PCIe power here like so, push the little tab in and pull it straight back. That's if you have a graphics card in, but I'm presuming you do if you're watching this video. These two screws here will take the graphics card out. This is where you'll need your Phillips head screwdriver. Magnetic ones are preferable as you uh, have less chance of dropping the screws down into your motherboard, which is not ideal. Take those out and keep them safe. Take your graphics card out, you'll either have to pull a tag back on the uh, end of the slot or push a little bit of plastic down. In this case I have to push a little bit of plastic down and just pull it straight up and the whole thing should come out. Wiggle it if it's refusing to come. And there we have my graphics card, the GTX 650 Ti Boost. Now that we've got ourselves a little bit more working room we can start to take the heatsink off. We'll have to get the heatsink off as the CPU is obviously underneath it. First thing we want to do is unplug it. And there is a tensioning arm here, like the, uh, the standard AMD mounting mechanism. We have to flip this over and the whole thing will come loose and we can take it off. If we get this arm here, pull it back, or up even, see so it pings out like that, that's now detensioned it. So that will allow us to take the hook off the little notch on the bottom of the heatsink. There we go, that's what connects it to the motherboard. There's one of those on the other side as well. There we go. It might stick to the CPU a bit, so just wiggle it because you don't want to bring the CPU with it. Oh dear. Don't worry about that, that's just the bracket that holds my tower heatsink on. Underneath we have my Phenom 2 with a fairly messy collection of thermal paste on top of it. So what we're going to do is easier to wipe this off whilst it's in the socket. So that's what I'm going to do. Just use a bit of kitchen towel. If it's refusing to come off, you can use some sort of uh, solvent, like white spirit or petrol in my case, and that will get it nice and clean. So first of all, we'll try a bit of dry kitchen towel and hope that actually takes it off. Yeah. And as this wasn't applied too long ago, it hasn't had a chance to go rock solid and get stuck to it. So thankfully, this is all we need. Oh, 
I'll try and clear the rest of that off later. But as this isn't the CPU that's going back in, it's not imperative that we get this perfect. So take it out, we're going to touch this arm here, push it out and up, and it goes click like that, and the whole thing becomes loose in the socket, as you can see. So now we can just grab it on either side and pull it straight up, like so. As you can see, we have a few little specks of thermal paste here, so... But it is imperative that we do not have any... any uh, rubbish down in the socket there. An old thermal paste would stop conductivity and therefore cause an issue. As you can see, I managed to spill a little bit of thermal paste onto the motherboard, removing the old stuff. So I just very carefully uh, wipe that up with that bit of kitchen towel there. So give the socket a close inspection, make sure there's nothing down in the pins. And I'm, now that I'm happy with that, we can get our new CPU and drop it in. So the whole point of this upgrade is to squeeze a little more life out of my main editing and gaming computer. So the reason for me choosing the FX8350 in particular is that there are some very good deals on it at the time. Uh, reason being, with the release of AMD's new Ryzen platform, um, obviously the price of these has fallen considerably. I bought this one new for uh, just under £100 and it should hopefully keep me going until we inevitably reach a point where we start a whole new computer. We want to take it out of this plastic packet, lift up on the corner, do this quite gently because you don't want it to uh, flip out onto the floor, and there you go, there is the CPU. Pop it out of its, well, try and bend the lid back a bit so it doesn't spring back. Now we have that out, we can get that somewhat close to our socket, so we can just take it straight out and drop it in. So we have our CPU socket. Notice the arm is still open. That means it's ready to accept the new CPU. To do this, we will need to align it. There is a triangle on this corner, as you might be able to see. And there's also a triangle on the CPU in this top corner, marked with like a little bit of gold. That way you know where it is. So line it up in the same orientation, like so. And you can take it out and drop it straight in the socket. Trying not to hit it on the, uh, the lever. Notice I'm wiggling, wiggling it there, that's just so I know it's properly in the socket. Next thing to do is take this arm and put it back down in the usual fashion, pulling it out at the bottom just to lock it in so it doesn't pop back up. As you can see, wiggling it now, it's solid in there and we're ready to pop the heatsink back on. But before we do, we will need to clean the bottom of it. As I said, some sort of solvent, it might even wipe off if you're lucky. As previously mentioned, we need to clean the heatsink. So to clean the heatsink, you can use solvents for the bottom, but also, just as important, is to clean out the fins, because as you can see, although this has only been in there for a few months, it's gotten quite dusty, so I'm going to take this outside and blow it out either with uh, a can of compressed air if you've got that, or uh, preferably uh, an air compressor. So take that outside or something and blow all of that dust out of there because that will help cooling performance in the long run. Right, so now that we've got our FX8350 installed, we can go ahead and put the heatsink back on. I've done the best job I can at clearing the, uh, the top of the heatsink and through the fans and the, and the fin, the fin area. But uh, without an air compressor, I can't really do much better than that. But it'll certainly be fine for this. Judging by the amount of thermal paste that was on there, I'm not gonna go as heavy on the uh, application this time as I did before. Come up to the CPU. And apply a bit in the middle. Like that, oh dear. That is terrible, but it will do. That is again probably excessive. Anyway, now time to put the heatsink back on. I covered the mounting mechanism for the TX3 Evo in the video I made about that, so. 
So if you want to know more about how to mount the TX3, I suggest you go and watch my uh, actual video about it, as this is uh, kind of a trick to doing this, because uh, you have to sort of hold it all in, all together as you put it on. So we'll sit that on top of the CPU, like so. It'd be a bit squidgy, so we'll just uh, work that around a bit on the surface. Now it's hooked on both ends, we can take this lever, tension it right up. And there we go, that's solid on there now. Now fan, or fan orientation is something to mention here, so this fan is actually uh, pulling air through the heatsink due to a clearance issue with my RAM. If you had one in the normal position that's pushing through the heatsink, you just want to make sure it's blowing the air out the back of the case or up through the top if you've got top ventilation, but I don't. So that's ready to go. All I need to do, obviously don't forget to plug it in, otherwise it's not going to do a lot. There we go, that's the fan plugged in. They are all labelled, so you should be able to find it quite easily. Yep, that's definitely tight. Next job, we can put the graphics card back in. Right, so having dusted out the graphics card, it's now time to plop that back in. So we want to line it up with the front, line it up with the slot, and plonk it straight down. There we go. A click there is the uh, latch on the back of the slot going in. So now we can get our two screws and put those back in. There we go. We now want the PCI power for the graphics card. Plug that back in. Just a single six pin on my particular card. There we go. That will power that. Make sure that any, uh, especially like this, if it's a six plus two, make sure that the little uh, two connector is not jamming the fan up and uh, there we go, we should be good to go all I've got to do now is put these side panel fans back on and uh, see if she boots now I know for a fact if you're anything like me you probably want to get this done as quickly as possible and see if, you've, see if your upgrades work properly but think practically about it this is probably the best time to clean out fan filters and the such, so take all your filters out, give them a good clean out, even wash them maybe if they're particularly bad. Uh, because if it's anything like my setup, it takes a while to get it all apart, and once you've got the computer out and here, you might as well just do it. So, I will plug the speed sensor back in for these uh, remarkably overcomplicated fans. Plug in any other fans you might have uh, installed. There we go. Plug it back into the motherboard. So we'll take care of the uh, route that the cables will go in so that they don't get stuck in anything. Because that will not improve performance. Seems most of mine are going to lay on top of the graphics card, so that's okay. Make sure all the locating little lugs have gone in and slide the panel back on. And you can see it already looks much nicer. So we're back and plugged in. I'll turn the switch on the back of the power supply. I've got the camera pointed at the monitor, which I believe the BIOS will pop up on. And uh, that's what we're going to want to do as soon as it starts up, is we'll try and go into the BIOS. So, here we go. Got a beep, which is a good thing. It's got a fan rubbing or something. New CPU installed, press F1 to run setup. Let me just find out what's going on with that fan. That appears to have stopped the fan noise. Okay, let's go to, oh there we go, Look, right there, we have AMD FX8350 8-core processor. 
the RAM is still in and running at the correct speed. Yeah. So I guess that's successful. So we'll boot into Windows and um, we'll start to have a look through before and after comparisons and stuff like that. Whilst they won't be detailed tests, it's still a good idea to verify that our upgrade has actually had some performance benefit. So just as a bit of a verification, we've gone on Cortem just to check that the uh, heatsink application has been correct and as you can see the temperature of uh, 35 is perfectly acceptable. I also checked it in the BIOS and that said around the same so as far as the heatsink is concerned I think that's all good so I'm now going to go ahead and start to run some benchmarks but you can also see there that uh, it's reporting correctly FX 8350 8 core, 8 cores, 8 threads and then all the different cores are listed out there in that very long list so let's get some tests and see what sort of things we can achieve so the areas I've decided to test are Cinebench just to give us a basic comparison a couple of real world tests a 720p HD render in the Sony Vegas and a fairly CPU intensive game GTA 5 all of these will be carried out with the same 16 gigs of RAM, the same SSD and the same NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost graphics card. In Cinebench we can see my old CPU reached a fairly underwhelming score of 317 CB. The 8 core managed a far more impressive 639, which is more than twice as high. In Sony Vegas we tested the time it took to render my Coolmaster HyperTX3 installation video which managed a whopping 50,000 views on my channel. Thanks very much for the support. It really makes me smile seeing such good viewership. What doesn't make me smile, however, is the 29 minute and 37 second render time that the quad core 965 managed. This being a task that favours multiple threads though meant that the 8 core 8 thread FX 8350 produced a much healthier time of 21 minutes and 30 seconds. I chose GTA 5 as it's a game that I've noticed the CPU struggling the most, from random freezes in menus and such, to just running it flat out for hours on end trying to keep up. So for this test I ran GTA standard benchmark that's built into the game and managed a score of 11 FPS minimum, 78.6 maximum and an average frame rate of 44 on the old quad core 965. The FX 8350 however fared slightly better and achieved a 22.4 minimum, a 100.1 maximum and an average frame rate of 46.7. Overall I am pleased with the upgrade and if it improves game performance as well as helping me edit and render videos faster then I am certainly happy with the final result. So thanks for watching, like or dislike the video accordingly, preferably not the latter, and I hope to see you again back on DOSHTECH.